It's been my dream to have my own workspace for a very long time. I've been a mechanic for 15 years now and I've got a massive passion for anything automotive. Over the last six years or so, Al and myself have been working in the skid factory and we've been working on some pretty cool cars. Now recently, Al has decided to take a step back from being the main host of the channel, which kind of left me with a bit of a what to do. Uh, the shed we currently work in is at Al's house. It's his own personal space and for me, I've always felt a bit uncomfortable invading that space. So it kind of left me with a, I've got to find somewhere new. So last week I picked up the keys to my new shed and we're currently on the way there to start building and working on creating my dream workshop space. I finally found the right place. I've got some great neighbors and it's an awesome space to work in. So stay tuned, let's head there and check out the skid factory 2.0, the wood factory, the new factory, whatever you want to call it. I'm bloody excited to show you guys what I've got. Nice little hidey hole in here. Oh, how's the drone? Don't know if the camera picks that up. My ears are killing me. This is the new shed. Also, new wheels on the crown wagon. Southern Way Shadow 2s. Love them. So here we are, entryway into 140 square meters of bare bones, echoey skid factory. Well, it was bare bones until I bought a window frame and then bought some secondhand pallet racking, then got a forklift, and then I figured I better paint the pallet racking because it was rusty. And we got a 40 square meter mez up the top there. Finding this space wasn't an easy task. Over the last three months, I've looked at so many places and the biggest thing being that this is a film studio, so the sound quality has to be good, not only in the area, although it's very echoey right now, uh, also the, the main thing was the neighbors. So being that so many places in an industrial estate have workshops and machinery going, uh, a couple of the places I looked at had like CNC machines next door, so they're super loud. Uh, that and another place had a big compressor, like industrial compressor, right out the back window, which was making a whole heap of racket. So it just wasn't going to work for me. So I ended up settling on this. And the plus side for this, which I kind of like, is it's a plus and also a downside, but it's a brand new shed. Brand new tilt slab, no one's ever been in here. So when we moved in, this was bare, bare bones, um, dust everywhere, cobwebs, and my mate Russell from KMR Concreting came in. He gave me a mad help with cleaning the slab. So we've etched the slab with some hydrochloric acid, uh, gurneyed it all out, and now it is basically clean slab. Well, it was clean until I started moving some stuff in. So once it was clean, I had to get some paint down, but I'm still actually waiting on the paint. And because I'm waiting on the paint, I've got like three weeks to get this set up and working in it. So it's kind of like, I've got to start smoothing some stuff in. So big ass window, marketplace find, four meters by two meters. That is for the mez. That's a 40 square mez up the top there. And that's going to be my office space. My mate Jake's coming around today. We're going to be building that today. So I'll jump up there later. Um, and then we've got some pallet racking. Marketplace find also, these were all rusty and corroded and just junk. So I know they're meant to be orange, but I have painted them black. So I'm using some paint from Super Cheap Auto, Montana colors, and I have to say, I'm very impressed with that paint. That stuff just laid down so good to the point where I would even say, I'd paint a car with that. Like it's just perfect. The color, is, the color quality is awesome. The nozzles on the cans are great. So that's now gonna be black. I ran out of paint, so I've still gotta finish off these ones. Um, but today the focus is getting this big window fitted up the top there for the mez. So Jake from McConnell Built's coming around and we're gonna hook in and um, get the job done. I've then got a lot of garage equipment coming from Joel's garage gear, so um, I'm gonna set that up. And also, as I said, I've gotta paint the floor. So lots to do, let's hook in, let's build myself my dream workshop. There you go, this side. Oh, g'day, mate. Get up, mate. <laughs> 
So here's the mezzanine, 40 square meter, and this kind of sits over the car park, so it doesn't encroach, if that's the right word, it doesn't interfere with the floor space. So we've got Jake from McConnell Built. Jake is one of my best friends, known him for many of years. How you going, brother? Good, mate, how are you? Yeah, really good, and Jake is gonna be the man responsible for bossing me around to put that big window here. So I've got some timber and some tools. It's funny because being a mechanic, I've got no idea how a bloody nail gun or a drop saw works. So <laughs> that's all I knew. I've also got my mate Aaron, Triple A Aardvark. How you going, brother? He's wearing a white shirt to help me out today. <laughs> <laughs> so no, Aaron's come around and checked the place out and I've asked him for some advice because he's recently set up his shop. Not a workshop, but you still got an idea of what goes on and the planning process. So, so I'm not too sure. So I'm hoping to have three hoists in this area. So the pallet racking is going to go against this wall. Um, the forklift can hopefully live at the front door or underneath here somewhere. And then I'm thinking a hoist there and maybe two on the angle here if I can fit them in. So driving in through the door and straight in. But after seeing Jake's trailer there, it's kind of like you run out of room pretty quick. So that's the plan. Anyway, the general plan. So right now though, Jake's here. We're going to remove this balustrading and get... That's loud. Going to get the window fitted in here. So. Hook in, job's on. <laughs> like this, is that what I'm doing? Yeah. Oh, sick. So what's not square then? This slab or this wall here? I reckon this edge. Oh yeah, well that'll explain this then. Yeah. Can you fix that too while this. you're here? <laughs> <laughs> I reckon in an hour we'll have most of this done. Sweet. Most of the spray Jake says an hour. Measure twice, cut once, <laughs> and then realise you cut it too short. Is this the length here? Good to go? <laughs> <laughs> There's a quick time lapse of the frame going in and some of these bad boy blue things, studs and all that stuff. So, <laughs> talk me through it. What are you done? Here, come here. You're the builder guy. Give me some YouTube action. He's running away. Anyway, so we've done this and we're gonna get some lunch now. So pretty sick progress and the vision I had for a mad window overlooking the workshop is um, coming together, so. I've kind of made the decision to just run with the broken glass for now. One of the panes is okay, there's two broken panes, um, but I can't actually get glass right now for about three weeks probably, so might just run the broken stuff first, but Jake's still got heaps to do. Like, it's not finished obviously, but um, and we're gonna clad it or something, I don't know what the word was. This is a doorway with a 900 and something. Anyway, progress happening, lunchtime, and job's on. Got anything to say, Jake? McC McConnell built 0458 866 288. Jake. <laughs> I just read it off your trailer. <laughs> we put in a mammoth effort to get this wall done, and I'm bloody stoked with the outcome. I've got to give a massive shout out to mate Jake. Absolute legendary effort. Also, my mate Josh and also Aaron for coming around to help me out. Just so good to have some awesome mates. We're about to wrap it up and I said to Jake, oh, I've got to clean the slab again for some paint. And then we ended up just hooking in once again. We stashed some stuff up onto the mezzanine. That was to get it so the floor could be clear and we could gurney it out again. So we got the gurney back out. We pressure cleaned the whole floor once again. And I then went and bought some fans to dry the place. So it's now been four days and we've had a couple of hot days. So the whole slab is now clean, dry. I've just given it a blowout and we've just um, taped up the outside too. We're ready to lay some paint down and I have got me stepdad Mick. How are you Mick? Wearing the, you've had that Skid Factory shirt for so long. It's ancient that one. Gave it to you about five years ago. I've got my mate Cloppy. Painting. Your painting shirt. Oh, it's a rag, is it? Yeah, it's 
Jerky. I'm getting coffee from RK Garage. Yeah, we've got some beef jerky and I've got some lemon squash. And I have got a whole bunch of paint from Custom Paints and Industrial in Wombai. Josh is an absolute legend. He's given me so much advice into what to do and also the colour is exactly what I was after. Wombai Paints and Industrial are on the Sunshine Coast, so if you do have any painting needs, here we go, there's a sticker. I've got to put that somewhere. Let me put that one. Custom Paints and Industrial, definitely get on board if you're on the coast and support local. There is a couple of marks which I'm a bit upset about, and this is just my bad. But it should be fine. We should be good. And once we get this first coat down, we're back tomorrow to lay down some more. You read the instructions there, Klopfi? Three part paint, one part hardener, and about 20% um, thinner. Yeah. Yep. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Got a couple of just watches here. The bystanders, a bit of a couple of hawks. Supervisors. And look at, check out this. Michael, how many wars have you painted in your lifetime? Look at this bucket here. <laughs> All right, so cutting in the edges and we'll get on the roller. Well, what started as a spectator turned into hands-on work. Aaron and Ange hooking in, absolute legends. How good are friends? How good are friends, Cloppy? What would you do without them, mate? What would I do without you? Exactly right. I've got a few favours up my sleeve, I think, with you. I've got to, I have to come round. You've helped me out enough. I'll come do some of those Everest EGR coolers for you. There we go, first coat down, and we're just finished off. Looking pretty good so far. Second coat goes down tomorrow, so we'll leave the fans on all night. They'll go. And just as we finish up, it's starting to rain now, so we've just shared the good times with some pizza. Ooh, my pepperoni. And we're gonna shut the roller door now. Yeah, how do we shut that? Thanks to Ange and Aaron for helping out. You guys are legends, honestly, man, thanks so much. Absolutely legendary. So we're done, close the roller door, and back tomorrow for a second coat. We came in first thing this morning, mixed up some paint and started cutting in some edges and it's looking pretty good. So far, there's a few spots which are drying a little bit patchy. I just think that that's more dry than the rest of it. So it does take about a week to cure uh, all up. So I'm allowed to drive on it for a week, but the second coat is going down. And so far, so good. Hello. Ah. Couple of, couple of girls bikes rock up to give me a hand. Oh, you got your good shirt on too. <laughs> How's how I'm, I'm covered in paint. I'm such a kook, eh? Okay, oh, he's repping it. Shit. My man. I've only got a what do you reckon, lads? Looks good. Looking good? Looks good. Do we have so, all you now? You want, I've, got, I've got some lemon squash in the fridge if you want. It's too early. Hey, um. I got some jerky. Oh, you got, yeah, it's <laughs> leftover. It's actually built on. Can you make me a workbench, Steve? -o? One of those fancy aluminium ones. Yeah. Can you me aluminium with like a steel top, maybe? Yeah. Stainless. Stainless top. Oh, stainless. Nah, it's not a food factory, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and the man, Jordan, is putting the finishing touches on. Ready. This is looking really good. I'm stoked. It actually just transforms the shed. And it's actually crazy the, the difference in lighting it makes too. That actually brightens the place up quite a lot. That's the last stroke done. It's absolutely stoked. Looking really good. Today is move day. This is a new Tulpo thing coming out next year actually, by the way. Keep your eye out for that one. This is the tester, which we've been testing for the last few months. This is, for those of you who are gonna ask about it, this is our mate, Pagger's Ute, which is a future project for Alan. And um, this is a prototype hail cover. So, Sunshine Coast, welcome to the tropics. And down here is the forgotten wonder of the skid factory, old Kevo. This thing has been sitting here pretty well since the last episode aired, actually. So, it's been in the naughty corner and Today's move day, I'm moving some cars over to the new shed and Kevo is first on the list. So let's get this hooked up onto the trailer. Wait, there's no brakes or anything on this thing either, is there? No, yeah. nothing. No. Oh, that, no. Kevo. No. That might make it a bit hard. 
Also, can I grab those, um, we'll tie it up onto the road? All right. You right there, brother? No, it's too hot. Yeah. Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> this kind of feels like your long lost cousin that you haven't seen for like two years and you only catch up with him at Christmas time or something. You just kind of forget what they look like and all the cool stuff. They do. Oh, Kevo. Very soon, my friend. Very soon. Woo! That'll do ya. One VR Commodore that's missing a fuel flap loaded on the trailer. I think everything's secure. Everything looks all right. Get a bit of a blow dry on the way down, blow some of this dust off. Jump in the world's worst Pajero and head down to the shed. Vehicle number one about to be dropped off. It is a pain in the butt to get here in the car trailer, but that's as far as I'm going. We're just gonna bag out the trailer and just roll him in and that is good. And I've also got my brother from Matthew Wood Electrical. That's such an original business name, bro. That works really well, doesn't it? <laughs> and Matt's doing the electrical for me. So, so far he's up the top there. You can see some lights. We've got some LED buttons going in. We're also putting some PowerPoints in everywhere for computers and all the rest of it. That needs to get done first so that we can then sheet that off and get that all done. And then what's the plan for shed? What's the plan for walls and PowerPoints down here? What are you doing? Just basic PowerPoints, we need them. And we need the big stuff, welder, compressor, lathe. I didn't think you'd be this awkward on camera. Lathe, you reckon? I don't need a lathe, I've got Dave and Al for that. Yeah, whatever you want here. All right, we'll turn that fan back on. How hot is it up there, you say? 38? 37. 37 degrees upstairs. So Matt was also talking about putting a couple of air cons in here for downstairs. On, I don't have that much money just yet, so we'll see what happens. All right, thanks brother. Thanks for the zero dollar labor rate too. <laughs> Come on, I'll trade swap you. Don't charge me. I've been thinking about it. You've been thinking about it. All right, thanks brother. I didn't, I didn't know the trailer did that. Perfectly executed to a T. Wicked done. Man, look at this thing. You just forget how much cool stuff's on it. It's like, it's been under the car cover for the last like four months or five months. And now I'm like, just seeing it gets me so motivated to work on it. So good. So keen. Wonder if those cam bolts are done up. The fair lane's kind of like your grandpa, you know, he's just old, a bit weathered. He's copped plenty of ass over the years. And uh, now in his old age, he just wants a little bit of loving. You know, he just wants to be cuddled, just wants to be looked after. And that's what I'm here for. Yeah, the question is, twin turbo or supercharged? A couple of Garrett's or a big old harrop on top? What are you choosing with the Coyote? Look at that front end. Nice. It's official, we've got a couple of vehicles in the shed, both the Fairlane and Kevo, and they both mean so much to me as cars. I can't wait to start working on them in the future, but there's still so much work to get done. Collectively, me and my mates have put in a mad effort to get the shop to where it is now. Today, we just got the pallet racking installed. This is not final positioning for this. The levels may change too. I've just kind of worked it out in my head and with my mates and Matt, my brother, to go, yeah, these levels are gonna work. I'm also gonna get some more support beams and maybe put some levels up higher. The forklift only reaches three meters, so that's as high as I can go with the fork, but I might be able to get another level up the top for 
storing the Christmas decorations up the top level or anything too. So the forklift ended up fitting at the front door too, which is positioned perfectly, in and out, easy access. Where the vehicles are positioned now is pretty well where the hoists are gonna be installed, plus another one at the door here. I worked with my mate Aaron and we worked on floor planner to design the workspace to pretty well be as productive as possible and that's kind of the best layout, including the power rack, including toolboxes and stuff on the back wall. So I want it to be as spacious as possible, but also as productive as possible and including some vehicle storage too. So we're just a couple of guys that like cars. We're not workshop designers or anything. So I'm putting the call out to the comments section. If you were building your dream workshop in this 140 square meter space, what would you do? What would you change? This video is being filmed close to when it's being released, so I can change the stuff. So let me know. I do read every single comment that gets posted below. So thank you to everyone who comments. There's still lots to get done. I'm still waiting on the hoists. They're coming from Joel's garage here and also a bunch of tools from Super Cheap Auto. That's still coming. My brother Matthew is still yet to do a lot of electrical work both upstairs and throughout here. There may be some aircon installed down here yet. I've just got to check with the budget. I'm not too sure if I can afford it. But we've made a bunch of progress and I'm very stoked. It's been my dream to have my own workshop for so long. Thank you so much to all my friends who have helped out, all the awesome companies I'm working with. Even if you're a mate, they're just dropping by to say hi. It really does mean so much to me. So thank you so much. Thank you for everyone for watching. You're gonna to have to tune in next week to see the progress on the shed with the tools and the hoists. So I'll see you then. Yeehaw, let's get it done.